We know that the absence of MECP2 in mice um, leads to neurological problems soon after birth. What we wanted to be able to do is have mice that had never experienced MECP2 and so had uh, their brain had developed, developed without it, wait until they were suffering the consequences of that and then put the gene back and ask whether or not you could go back to square one or whether or not this was too late uh, we were shutting the stable door after the horse had already bolted. Normal MECP2 gene of mice uh, are a kind of a roadblock so that normally this gene is read to make the protein the roadblock means it gets this far and then it stops and so you never get any protein but on either side of that roadblock we've put special cut marks if you like which meant that when we uh, did something else to the mice namely injected them with a drug called tamoxifen uh, there, then a protein went into the nucleus that spotted the cut marks and could remove the roadblock. So now the gene that was previously crippled suddenly becomes healthy and can function and so you get read through and expression of the protein. And we showed that when you had the roadblock in there was no expression and when you gave tamoxifen you suddenly got expression of the gene uh, and that all worked fine. So um, it's really that that, that uh, was the key to the experiment. And it's, it's, it's that that Jackie made work, despite the fact that it's technically extremely difficult to do. Tamoxifen only works in this context because the mice have been set up to respond to it by activating uh, the MECP2 gene. But in order to get them to do that, it was necessary to alter the structure of the gene in specific ways. It would have absolutely no effect in humans. What we expected at best was that switching on the gene would delay death or, de or make some of the symptoms slightly better. That's what we were hoping for as our best possible outcome, if you like. The worst possible outcome was that we'd spent all this time, Jackie had spent all this time, elegantly constructing uh, this uh, interrupted gene that could be uh, de-interrupted under the influence of hormone injection and that in the end, all we would find out was nothing could be done. Even if you put back the gene that had been missing all the time, it was just too late. So um, the expectation was we'd get a sort of a bit of uh, a mixed result. But in fact, we got a crystal clear result. Everything got dramatically better. And uh, that's one of those exciting moments in research when you, you know, a sort of re eureka moment people's experience who work with the brain is, is that, and the general perception in the field, is that once you have damage in the brain, it's very difficult to go backwards. And there is quite a lot of elegant experimentation uh, in, in neuroscience showing that the that proper orderly development of the brain is very, very important. And without it, there are windows of opportunity for things to go right that you miss. And so the expectation was that without MECP2, you'd miss a lot of these windows. And so when you put it back, uh, nothing could be done. So that's why the result was surprising, but obviously very gratifying. So we uh, found, in fact, that there were no windows of opportunity early on, because you could switch on MECP2 even in animals that normally would have only had a few days to live. And these animals were very sick. And yet you activate the gene and uh, they, uh, many of the symptoms revert and you end up with a, a nearly normal mouse. And this is, um, this is highly unexpected, I would say. They are reversible. You can, um, you know, more uh, spectacularly reversible than we had ever imagined, actually. It was an experiment, if you like, that we were expecting the result to be disappointing. But it had to, it had to be done just in case, and just in case turned out to be correct in this. So if you like, people who were looking for um, drugs or trying gene therapy um, in order to fix this, this uh, distressing disorder, now know that it's worth their while. For scientists, it just means uh, a green light to go harder to get a cure. Now we know the reversibility, there's no reason to hold back in doing everything possible to develop assays that allow you to um, uh, screen drugs.
the next steps are really this is I suppose this has put wind in the sails of all everyone who is trying to find approaches to this therapy whether it's our lab or other labs our lab is better adapted to studying the mice and working out what's going on understanding the molecular biology of this disorder but we are, are also interested in developing some kind of therapeutic approach I think um, what we need is a simple assay for the function of MECP2. The mouse is a sort of a test for its function because if you don't have it then you end up with uh, these neurological problems. But this is a slow assay and it's also expensive. You need to make the mice and uh, watch them and in individual d organisms differ so uh, you've got to have lots of them in order to get statistically meaningful results. What we would like is an assay which takes place in cell culture, where you can look at, for example, a gene that gets uh, is active, and if you express a functional MECP2, or um, then then it becomes silenced, or something like that, or the other way around. You want something quick, and at the moment we do not have that for MECP2. These kids are, are heterozygous. That means they have one normal chromosome. With the, nor, with the unmutated gene and one chromosome with the mutated gene. It's just that because of X chromosome inactivation, they shut one of those off in a random way. So this cell is only expressing the normal gene and the other cell has chosen to inactivate the other chromosome and it's expressing the mutant gene. It could be that someone studying X chromosome inactivation, because that's what it's due to, will come up with some uh, generalized trigger from studying the basic mechanisms they will come up with a reason um, with, a, with a possible way in which you could react reactivate these gene uh, a specific gene or it could be that someone will develop an assay for uh, reactivation of this gene so you have a cell with a silent MECP2 gene in you simply throw on everything you've got and see if you can reactivate it I mean that's really a long shot but if you've got a million compounds one in a million is a long shot uh, but one is all you need being interested in Rett syndrome has one real, as a researcher, has only one purpose, and that is to try to be able to develop technologies that allow you to intervene to make the symptoms go away. It's absolutely crucial, therefore, now that we have a model, a mouse, mo an animal model of the disorder, to ask whether or not, in the best possible scenario that you can think of, namely restoring the gene that was missing that caused all the problems in the first place, whether that works. Because if that doesn't work, then it's quite possible that a lot of the other ways of looking to, to treat this disorder are a waste of time. So what our result says is that they are far from being a waste of time. There is every reason to believe that intervention in this disorder will lead to an improvement if we can just now find the right sorts of interventions. As a, as a parent of a ret child, knowing that all you have to do is put the gene back and you would get um, uh, stand a good chance of getting normality, assuming that the mouse is an accurate reflection of the human, which it looks like it is, that, that's, that's a really hopeful sign and it means um, it means, I think, probably that parents will be impatient for the next bit. Unfortunately, I think the next bit may not be that quick. Uh, you know, it, does, it takes quite a long time to develop these kinds of in, in, uh, interventions. And so um, uh, I think that, that's, that's the difficult part to live with, probably. But um, I know from having spoken to parents about this result that they, they do find it a very hopeful and um, positive thing. There is every reason to believe that intervention in this disorder will lead to an improvement if we can just now find the right sorts of interventions.